we need to talk about Iran. So, tonight, the last week, the Ayatollah is very, very sad. We have a very, very sad Ayatollah. Let's see. Oh, no. I mean, it, <laughs> it's just so sad. Um, the Ayatollah is sad because his boyfriend and homosexual lover, Qasem Soleimani, has been killed. Uh, do we have a picture of Qasem Soleimani, the Ayatollah? Yes. Okay, so here we have Qasem Soleimani. He's the, uh, the one on, on, the, on the far side with no uh, sexy hat on. The two other studs. Uh, on the other end is the Ayatollah. In the middle of them is Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, a terrorist organization. Um, and this is a show that they do on Iran every night where it's like, um, it's like a sex orgy. So they, they, they all get naked and have homosexual sex. And just so you know, the Ayatollah is the catcher and Soleimani was the pitcher. And uh, Nasrallah, Hassan Nasrallah would cover himself in honey and dates and just rub himself uh, through most of it. It's, uh, it's the number one show in Iran. You could see why I'm on a list there. Anyways, I will not be traveling to Tehran anytime soon. So, the Ayatollah is mad because his homosexual lover, Qasem Soleimani, is dead. Now, in all seriousness, who is Qasem Soleimani? What happened? What's all this with the region? Qasem Soleimani is not just a terrorist. To say he's a terrorist would not do him justice. He is an arch-terrorist, a super-terrorist. He is the head of not one, but multiple terrorists. He headed up a terrorist network, and he was arguably the second most powerful man in Iran, maybe the most powerful. So, what, what happened? Okay, he's the head of the Quds Force in the IRGC. So what is the IRGC? Because you're going to hear it a lot. It's called the Revolutionary Guard. They're a military force, like, but it's not the actual military. So when the New York Times says, revered military commander, I think it was the Washington Post, revered military commander, that's actually not true. The IRGC is not part of the military. Iran has a military we get conscripted into. But then there's a parallel force, an ideological military, like the Nazis, Waffen, SS. But the IRGC is much bigger than the R SS. They control, they're about half, they're about the, a bit bigger than the actual military, and they also control half of Iran's economy domestically. Now, their foreign policy is headed up by the Quds Force. It's like a super CIA. It, it has, it's, it's bigger than the CIA. And their goal, the stated goal of the Quds Force, is to basically take over the world. Quds, by the way, is the Arabic name and the Persian name for Jerusalem. So one of their views on Jerusalem, like the, the goal is like, it's literally named the Conquer Israel Force. But it's more than that, right? Death to America, death to Israel, just death to the West. Their goal is to create a global caliphate based on the rule of the supreme leader, which is the current Ayatollah Khamenei. Okay? Now, Qasem Soleimani headed up the Quds Force. The Quds Force is a listed terrorist organization in America and in Canada. This will become very important when we're talking about what happens later on. So, Qasem Soleimani is the head of the Quds Force, was in charge of multiple terrorist organizations. Hassan Nasrallah, who I showed you beforehand, who I'm going to quote later, but Hassan Nasrallah, the Hezbollah leader, his boss is Qasem Soleimani. The leader of Hezbollah, as he is, the, sorry, the leader of Hamas as well. And Hamas and Hezbollah don't get along, but both their bosses, right, are Soleimani. He also funds Islamic Jihad. Islamic Jihad, they're like the third party in the Palestinian territories. They have like less than 1% support. They're just a strict Iranian proxy, and their goal is to launch rockets to undermine any possible chance of peace between any other group. So they, they act as like a, a fail-safe in case peace is be between Israel and Palestinians start to happen. Iran will just fund Islamic Jihad and will start launching rockets at everyone. They're jerks. Now, there are also other terrorists. The war in Yemen, the civil war, was started by the work of Qasem Soleimani, the Houthi rebels, which are these just random tribesmen. One of the goals of the Quds Force, and in their directive, is um, something that they do is they call it finding cells of resistance. And what cells of resistance are, to them, is just large pockets of Shiite Muslims. Maybe it's Iran Shiite, but they also work with Sunnis in, in different ways. But anytime they see large pockets of Shiite Muslims, what they will do is they will send in IRGC Quds Force people, they will get into them, give them money, lots of money, and then once they make deals with them, they start to fund in weapons and training, and IRGC people will train them. Um, they've been involved in multiple genocides. So, like, a lot of the killing of Christians in Af Africa, the Muslim Brotherhood is involved in that, but so is the IRGC. And the Iran, Iran works really well with the Muslim Brotherhood right now. It's a new sort of global alliance between Iran, Qatar, and Turkey. So the Yemeni Houthis, just tribesmen, were funded by Iran, came up through a coup, took over Yemen, which is right on the, the ass of Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia was like, we can't have this. Then they started fighting. That's how the Yemeni civil war started.
There are other places Iran is involved in. The IMA bombing in Argentina, that was IRGC. The Mykonos bombing in, in uh, Germany, IRGC. There was a story last, uh, last year where there was a Hezbollah operative scouting up Pearson Airport in Toronto. Again, this guy probably reports to Soleimani uh, down the line. I mean, he reports to someone who reports to someone who reports to Nasrallah who reports to Soleimani, but you, you know under this goes. Now, if you've been watching the show for a long time, and if you're new, well, I'll explain this, but people who've been watching this for the last few years know I've been talking about the Shia croissant. And this is what sort of the Iran deal enabled. You have a croissant, which is Iran's power path uh, to, get, uh, to, to sort of get from them to, uh, to, to the Mediterranean, which is important. So it goes Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon. They're all in a row. And one of the reasons why a lot of U.S. allies, primarily Israel, were so against the war in Iraq I mean, people tend to hear this, but people don't know that the Israelis tried really, really hard to lobby and undermine the American war effort to go to war in Iraq because they said, Iraq's majority is Shiite, and if you knock out the current Saddam government, they hated Saddam, right? They're the one who took out his nuclear reactors, but they knew that if Saddam falls, Iran's going to take over because it's Shiite, and Iran created a, a proxy party in Iraq, and that party has power. They also control Hezbollah in Lebanon, and now Assad's... Assad, Assyria is basically a province of Iran. Assyria is a country that doesn't exist. It's a province of Iran. Now, this is all important to know. So, these are the players. Hezbollah in Lebanon, Assad in Syria. But in Iraq, it's, it's kind of iffy, right? It's, it's half and half. The politics are very split here. So, in Iraq, for the last couple months, there have been uprisings. In Le they started in Lebanon, they went to Iraq, and then they went into Iran. High-end estimates, I guess, Iran killed about 10,000 of its own people in the last month. And thousands also were dying in Iraq. So the people protesting in Iraq were actually protesting Iran in Iraq, and it was Iranian security forces firing upon them. They were the ones who killed. Then, Hezbollah Iranian militants, they launched a rocket. It killed an American. And because they killed an American, Trump learned where Soleimani was, and he took him out. Now, getting Soleimani, huge, huge, huge accomplishment. I wrote an article, and I, and I still stand by this, Soleimani is bigger than bin Laden and Baghdadi. He's more important than both of them. He, he, this, I mean, killing bin Laden was more symbolic. Killing Baghdadi was more symbolic. Again, if I had a gun and Osama bin Laden's right there, I shoot him in the face, right? Dead. It's important. But killing Soleimani was actually productive in a lot of different ways because, again, he was the linchpin that, that worked a bunch of different terrorist networks, okay? The IRGC had, had weapon cells all over. The first genocides and massacres committed in the Yugoslav Civil War and the Yugoslavia broke up it wasn't, it was Muslim forces in Bosnia, but it wasn't the Bosnians. It was the IRGC went to go help and support them. They started to instigate more killing. It was Iranian IRGC who did, committed the first massacres against religious minorities in the Yugoslavian Civil War. Now, everyone committed massacres there. I'm not defending Milosevic or the Croats in any way, but it's just to show you what they've been up to. They're, not, they're no friends of the world. You don't, these, this is an organization where you don't really want their help as a country. Now, so Soleimani gets whacked. They drone strike him. Now, okay. Idiots, read Democrats, start to say stupid things like, Trump needed congressional approval. This is illegal. No, it is not. This is a head of the Quds Force, a listed terrorist organization. Congress has listed the Quds Force as a terrorist organization. In an active military zone in Iraq, right? An American just been killed, and, and, and there had been current fighting. There was an attack on the embassy. The, the president both had congressional authority to hit Soleimani, head of the Quds Force, and he could use executive order to enact national defense. One of the rules of the president is if, imminent, if there's imminent national defense, right? If missiles are flying at America currently, right? If I get outside, I'm like, yo, guys, let's get the missile launcher. And we launch a missile at America. The president needs to be able to have the executive power of like, should we shoot down that missile? Yes, right? And oh, like, don't, the, the Congress wouldn't vote on shooting it down, right? It makes sense. Someone needs to take executive action in this case. So Soleimani is a listed terrorist, under, voted on, fully legal operating in a current war zone in Iraq, they hit him. Now, hitting Soleimani is impressive because he's been known as a ghost, right? Uh, take, what, take what you will of the Americans and Obama not wanting to kill him. If the Mossad knew where Soleimani was, the Israeli intelligence, they'd whack him. Easily. Easily. He's their biggest enemy. So, they know that there is a functioning intelligence agency that really wants to hit this guy. His location was a top state secret. I know for a fact that there was ministers in the Iranian government, important people, who wouldn't even know where Soleimani was because he's that important to them. He was the number two guy in the country. Possibly number one, if, if, if you look at the power in politics there. So Soleimani gets whacked, which is a major intelligence coup there. 
And if he gets whacked in Iraq, it also means that Iraqi intelligence, there was an Iraqi intelligence officer and parts of the Iraqi intelligence agency that went around the Iranian influence and went straight to the Americans. Which means the Iranians know that if they want any prolonged activity in Iraq, which is why if they want to do more than just launch missiles from Iran, they have to deal with the fact that the security forces and the Iraqi intelligence and security agencies are more pro-American than they are pro-Iranian. All right, so that's another message sent by the Soleimani killing that not a lot of people are talking about. All right, so this is, this is the baseline politics of what happens. So Soleimani gets whacked, and I wrote the article that this makes World War III less likely because Iran is not a Western country. Iran does not understand, you know, transgender will, windmills for the poor. This is not how they operate, okay? They operate on strength and strength alone. So when Obama just gave them a bunch of money and said, oh, please don't be terrorists, they're like, yeah, we're going to be terrorists. Like, we don't respect you. Why would we, you know... Oh, thanks for the $150 billion. That was pretty sweet. Uh, here you go, Hezbollah. Here you go, Hamas. Here you go, Houthis. Here you go. Let's, let's find some, you know, let's, let's start cells in East Africa and West Africa. Let's see, how much, let's see how many genocides we can do in Africa now. Right? They're crazy. Crazy people. Now, Soleimani is now bye-bye, which means the Iranians understand this message. This is, you mess with us through proxies in Iraq, we're not going to pretend it was the Iraqis. I'm not Obama. I know who's behind this. You were behind this, so you paid. The Iranians paid the price. So one, they got an actual slap on the wrist. There were more. They punched in the face. They actually got hit. Because Soleimani, again, was their top guy. Now, the other thing is, they don't have their top guy. This is the guy who coordinated between all their, their, their foreign assets. They have a very, very vast web of networks. America took out the spider. That's a major hit to them. Okay? And Iran is not a country that values, you know, meritocracy and competence above all else. Right? It's one of those, you know, crazy theocratic doomsday cults where they kind of value loyalty to the Ayatollah, which means when number one gets whacked, maybe number two takes number one spot. But it doesn't mean three's moving to number two. It doesn't mean four's moving to three. It doesn't mean five's moving to four. In countries like this, Right? It's often the person who's the most loyal who gets promoted. So expect a favored minister's cousin to move up in the IRGC over the third best commander getting moved up in the IRGC. And considering there's going to be new people in new positions, regimes like this, they are all about who has more power. Right? There's going to be internal fighting. Expect over the next year, internal fighting within the IRGC. Expect some culling. Expect some internal coups. Expect some internal noise. They might be unified together now to avenge Soleimani, but taking, if you just leave them alone for a little bit, you will get internal culling. It is most likely that with the top guy going on the IRGC and a massive restructuring, there'll be massive power plays for internal power within this theocratic regime. You can, you can take that one to the bank. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of the geopolitics of what went on. Okay, that's Soleimani gone, and because the Iranians actually got hit in the mouth, they're less likely to do so. Remember, they seized oil tankers in the Gulf, they, uh, they shot down American drones, they, they've been just doing nonsense nonstop, and they finally got hit in the mouth, and then they did a little, ooh, we're going to little tap your bases, give him a little love tap. No American casualties. All right. So where does this put us now, right? The Iranians had basically given the Iraqi bases a love tap. I have sources who have said to me, and I'm hearing rumors, that they, they even notified the Americans beforehand. There's people claim the Iraqi president knew beforehand that they were working through Switzerland. I mean, this is one of the ways, they don't have diplomatic relations, but the Americans, Iraqis talk, Iranians, sorry, talk through Switzerland. Apparently, Iran notified them beforehand. So no one really died, and this was a massive display of weakness from the Iranians. Now, internally, they said, you know, we killed 30 Americans, we're the greatest, we're the greatest military ever, you know, Soleimani's ghost is uh, destroyed, the evil Satan, blah, 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 Jews, you know, the classics. But Javid Zarif, the propaganda minister, sorry, foreign minister, actually got on Twitter and said, hey, this is all we're going to do. If, if, you don't, if you don't hit us, we won't hit you. And that is a massive, massive pushback. Because remember, the Iranian government, the Islamic Republic, it is an Islamic Republic. The supreme leader is a god, right? He is like a step below God. It's like Allah, Muhammad, Ayatollah. Okay, he's on that pantheon of godhood. So this is a regime that's been like, we will destroy the West with the virtue of our whatever. We're just gonna, we're gonna, you know, take a Koran and boom, and then it's gonna go boom, and then we're, you know, world domination. Whatever crazy nonsense they say. 
It's a significant tone down of rhetoric. This could be read, and they're lucky that the media, American media, is so dead set on being Iranian propaganda that, it, it, I mean, as a side note, you guys know I all watch this, I watch the CBC every day. I watched CNN for the last couple of days. Oh my God, it was bad. Like, like, like 50 billion Rosemary Bardens on a scale of, of, of 10. Like, literally, like, I, I've watched Canadian propaganda and been like, this is propaganda, okay, this is wrong. Watching CNN, it's like, no, this is like Mullah TV. This is like if the Mullahs had a direct, if like Wolf Blitzer, who, whose brain is actually empty, but if they took Anderson Cooper and like put it, through, la, 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 it was literally like, death to America, we will destroy them. Ah, la, la, la. Like, literally, like that, that would have been better coverage of Iran. It was mind-blowing. Mind-blowing how bad the media was. And this is why I'm really happy with the settlement of Nick Sandman we'll get to much later. Okay.